Welcome to the Mage DPS Roll Actions Guide. Here we'll go through our roll actions to explain the uses for newbies while still going through multiple or high-end content uses. You should be treating these skills as an extension of your job's toolkits, with some actions being extremely key for proper survival. As a DPS, your main goal is to do the most damage you can, but your roll actions can do that and much more. This more bit is what is commonly overlooked while being the most important aspect of your roll actions. At the very least, your improved survival and subtle content will be proof enough of that. We have five roll actions as a mage job, with each one having a very different effect from the last, meaning a bunch of different situations you'll want to learn how to recognize. We'll start seeing those as we go through the actions. Let's get checking them now. Before we get into specific skills, I want to emphasize that almost all roll actions are OGCD, off global cooldown abilities. These can be weaved, used between weapon skills or spell cast. You should have a few of these in your normal toolkit, obviously, but noting that these are almost all OGCD skills emphasizes how easy to use they can be. Level 8, Addle. This is likely the most slept on skill for mage players. On a 90 second cooldown, this reduces magical damage a single target deals by 10%, and physical damage it deals by 5%. On the bad side, you can't tell what is magic or physical at a glance, at best paying attention to animations and whether the attack hits one player or the whole party. Most things you're going to use this on are also all magical. The good news is, even 5% can be a huge difference. There are two places you will use this, tank busters and raid wide damage. Tank busters are most often where you see the attacks be physical. The boss will do some sort of punch or poke that does massive damage to even a tank. You can reduce this damage by 5%, just by hitting Addle. Fortunately for you, in high-end duties, it ends up mostly being magical busters, though in such high-end content, 5% is huge, potentially more damage reduction than 10% in casual content. Any big hit the tank will take, use Addle on it, and they will survive better and be able to be healed up more safely. This exact same situation also applies to Raid Wides, which is where Addle is more often going to be used. Raid Wides, even in casual content, can hurt a lot. They are almost exclusively magic damage, and 10% off of these can make a big difference, especially if the healer is struggling, or even if they have full control of the situation. Less damage for the party is less healing needed. The more mistakes your party is making, the more this matters. Vulnerability stacks that increase damage taken are a thing. Some mechanics, when failed, punish the entire party with this debuff. That means everyone took some damage, everyone will take more, and everyone will benefit just that much more from Addle being placed on a raid wide. Small situations, little multipliers, can add up big time. And a counter like Addle can make just that much enough of a difference to save the day. Then again, high-end content, you will need to be Addling for a lot bigger of an effect, it will save a lot of runs just because that tiny difference was during an already shaky run. Learn what is and isn't a tank buster, learn what does a lot of damage to your party and duties, and addle them to help out. Level 10, Sleep. Sleep has a 2.5 second cast time and 2.5 second recast. It costs 800 MP to use, which is a decent chunk. It puts a target and all enemies within five yams of the initial target to sleep for 30 seconds. Any attack will wake them up, but it is pretty okay crowd control if you are struggling in the overworld. You never want to intentionally fight multiple enemies at once, so it's not useful there, but there will be quests that require multiple enemies to be fought. You can start off with a sleep cast, then try to burst an enemy down before they wake up. This increases your survival a little bit, though often not needing to be required. Solo duties, sleep can be hit or miss, but it can still work there. In party content, this is all but worthless. The only situation this will be called for in dungeons is if the tank is dead. Assuming a co-DPS isn't spamming AoE, area of effect attacks, in an attempt to kill off enemies before they die too, a sleep cast can potentially put the enemies to sleep and give the healer time to get the tank back up. But again, your allies need to not be using AoE. If they don't realize you're trying to put enemies to sleep, they will wake them right back up. And to even want to use sleep, the tank needed to have died first. It can save the day on very rare occasions, but doesn't go beyond that. Do not just randomly throw this out in some attempt to make the tank take less damage. They will definitely be spamming their own AoE skill, making any sleeping enemy instantly wake up. Level 14, Lucid Dreaming. 
On a 60 second cooldown, this grants you a 55 potency MP regen for 21 seconds. This acts like a dot or hot ticking on a server tick every 3 seconds. In total, that means this will tick 7 times. 55 potency meanwhile is 550 with the zero chopped off. 550 MP is how much this regens per tick for a total of 3850 MP regen. That is a lot of MP. As a black mage, this is all but entirely worthless. Black mage can't weave too well, and lucid dreaming is negated by astral fire. Our other mage jobs, meanwhile, should use this on cooldown. Just from doing your normal rotation, you will be eating through your MP. You want to be using this anytime you are missing a little bit of MP. Sitting at below 8000 MP? Hit lucid dreaming to start the regen. Any lengthy encounter will have you hitting lucid dreaming multiple times basically on cooldown. MP economy isn't much of a thing otherwise. Lucid Dreaming will all but be enough to maintain your MP through everything. The better your team and the better you get, the less MP you need too since things die sooner. But even then, you need some level of MP regen to have enough to go around. If you do not use Lucid Dreaming, you're going to run out of MP eventually. Do not forget this exists. Even good use of Lucid Dreaming can still lead you to bottom out if your party is struggling enough. Raises are extremely expensive at 2400 MP. A couple of those in a fight and you'll be running on fumes. Healers can die too or need your help worth raising. This is especially true for Red Mage at level 64 and higher. The raise can be dual cast, meaning you can get raise out every 5 seconds. This will however immediately delete your entire MP bar. So keep an eye on your MP bar and keep the regen going. Get ready to adjust your performance if you end up running low due to saving a run with Ray Spam, or end up dying yourself. Level 18, Swift Cast. On a 60 second cooldown, your next spell is cast immediately with no cast time at all. This includes Ray's, which goes from 8 seconds to 0 seconds. That is going to be your secondary use since, as I said, healers are the main raises and Red Mage can just dual cast. But if you're raising, you're not going to spend 8 seconds on it as a summoner. You'll just swift cast it when you can. The other place you might want to swift cast are during movement. You can't just stop to cast a spell a lot of the time. You need to keep moving. But you also need to do damage. If you don't have any instant cast skills available, you can use swift cast to make something else into exactly what you need. You also will be using swift cast as a main part of your rotation. Black Mage especially wants to use Swift as a rotational skill due to their gimmicks, and lack of a raise, but even Red Mage with their dual cast trait will want to make liberal use of Swift casting. There are benefits specific to each job's rotation to using Swift cast that are not going to be gone over here. The point is that if you don't need to hold Swift for movement, you can use it to keep your rotation going, and even improving it. It can be very tempting to hold onto it for raising as a summoner, but holding stuff for emergencies is most often a bad idea. Level 44, Surecast. On a 2 minute cooldown, Surecast comes with two effects and will remain on you for 6 seconds. The first and main one you will use is that this is a skill that ignores most knockback and draw in effects. This includes another role action that healers have, Rescue. In many boss fights, they will do moves that might not even do damage, only pushing players around. These often come with arenas that you can fall off of or have death walls. These moves go from minor annoyance that might lose you a single hit to potential death. Surecast says nah to that and allows you to ignore certain knockback mechanics entirely. For an example of a current fight that has a huge spotlight on this skill, Dragonsong Reprise Ultimate has a mechanic that essentially requires the use of Surecast to defeat a knockback. Some other attacks in this same fight ignore knockback mitigation. Point is, this truly is an important aspect to get used to. Even if you aren't worried about your damage, learn when to surecast and negate knockback if only for that purpose. Mistakes happen and you may actually be in a bad spot or a bad angle. You could get knocked off the arena just barely because you weren't as perfectly placed as expected. Better to surecast and gain the extra damage than die because you stubbornly ignored it. The other use is for solo play or when the tank ends up dying. You can cast spells without being interrupted mid-cast. You may have noticed rarely having your spell casts cancelled after being attacked. Sure cast prevents this entirely, so in solo you can pop sure cast before an important, strong cast or such. 
Though this is mostly only a thing when fighting enemies higher level than you. In party content, this will only come in if the tank has really messed up. You should not be being hit by enemies other than unavoidable damage, which won't ever interrupt you anyway. The tank would have to just be actively not taking enmity, or just flat up died for you to be able to be interrupted in party content. Ideally, your tank will never mess up or die to need this last ditch effort, and your DPS allies might be higher enmity levels than you. So that leaves the overworld uses. Every little edge you can get is nice, and it all does add up eventually. Be sure to use it for those rarer situations, and make liberal use of it to delete knockback moves. Then get sad when you go to use it in a savage fight, and still get launched halfway across the arena, because it's one of those moves that ignores sure cast. That covers all of our mage role actions. These skills cover a lot of issues we may run into as we progress through the game, or otherwise help us be better party members. At worst, we can make a small difference in the course of a duty. In the best case, we'll be making or breaking the run with our actions and high-end duties with something like Addle. Make sure you get a good understanding of these skills, because you can't truly say you're playing your role if you ignore role actions, now can you? Thank you for watching this guide on your mage role actions. I hope you've seen how important role actions can be as part of your toolkit. A dead DPS to zero DPS, and each one improves survival in one way or the other. Be sure to ask questions on the skills if you don't quite understand their uses, and seek to improve just a little bit extra. Take care and may the power of Anna did hogs a waste to your enemies. And a big thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra, extra special thanks to my big dragons who are... Ashtree Dweller, Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sidia Dios de San, Serix, Ethan Olson, Frasia97, Greg, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, T Rogue, Timmy, Tabood, and Zero Two. Thank you all again, and have a good night.